after a great game like the other night, how do you have to prepare against the Yeah, you know, hopefully we don't. You know, that's where you, you lean on experience. Um, you lean on your veteran guys. Certainly it's a point of emphasis. Like I told the guys, it's, it's easy to kind of go on to the next thing when you get beat or you don't play as well because you want to get on to the next thing. It's much harder, you know, when you have a good performance, when you win a game. Um, the, the great teams, the really good players, they always want more. You know, they're not satisfied with just a win or just a couple wins. And, you know, you, in this league, the moment you let your foot off the gas pedal a little bit, you pay for it dearly with whoever you play. And we have a very hungry team coming in here in Ohio State that has very good players and they're well coached and our guys better be ready. You know, we, we definitely wanted to celebrate a great win. You do it that night, but then we came back yesterday and it was all about Ohio State. We didn't spend one second, you know, talking about Illinois or the, that's over. You know, we had to get into our preparation for this game. We know it's going to be very tough. Do you have to remind your players that Ohio State is very long losing record on the road? Yeah, I mean, I just think in general, um, you know, they're they're a proud program. They have good players. Um, they're looking for wins just like we are, you know. And so when you play in the Big Ten, everybody's hungry for wins. And when you get an opportunity to play at home, we've already seen, everyone's seen the numbers, right? I mean, it's very hard to win on the road no matter who you are, um, you know, us included. Um, so, you know, when you do get a home game, they, may, they become even more important. And so, you know, I, I trust our leadership of our group, um, the guys we have. I know they're excited about getting back out there. You know, obviously we've got to get our bodies right. It was a very physical, intense game on Wednesday night. And, you know, yesterday was about, you know, recovery and rest and kind of moving on to Ohio State. And now, you know, we have to have a really good practice today and get ready for tomorrow night. How significant is it and what do you think it says about this team that they've been able to pull out these wins um, a couple of them now and over time? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, first of all, if you want to have a great season, you have to. And, we talked about it yesterday. I mean, even look at our conference games. We've had, what, we're, we're eight games into the league. Really, we've only had two of the eight games that didn't come down to the last two minutes or the very last possession. And fortunately, in those six games that we did, we're four and two, you know, with, uh, so and that's what you have to do. If you want to have a successful season, you have to win close games and, or at least win more than you lose. And, you know, having veterans helps. You know, having a veteran point guard, a guy like Boo, who's been in a, a ton of these games, you know, his poise under pressure, I think helps. But even a Ty Berry, a Ryan Langborg, who's an older guy, Brooks now is a junior, Matt, you know, they're, they're experienced players that have, have tasted winning. So, you know, I've talked about it a lot. You know, now our guys, I think, instead of just hoping to win, they get in those moments and there's an expectation of, no, this is, we're gonna win. And, you know, that's what the good teams do and that's what we're aspiring to be. Aspiring to be. This, this is the very point at which last year, 14 and five, five and three, I don't know about everybody else, but at least this is when I started asking you about the tournament. Are, are you, you, that's what you are on, now. Steve. Same record? Well, yeah, I know. are you ready for six weeks of speculation about that? Uh, I guess, yeah. I mean, we, we're so in the moment. Um, you know, it, it's crazy. Like, when you play in the Big Ten, and I, I'm not making this up, like, I really only know what's in front of me. Like, uh, you know, Coach Underwood asked me, you know, we're just making small talk before the game, and he said, who do you guys play next? And I really didn't know. Like, I... Oh, you're, you're so locked in. I was like, I, I thought about it, and I was like, you know what, I, I don't even know. And he laughed, and he's like, yeah, this league just does that to you. Um, so you have to stay in the moment. You know, do we want to be a team that's playing in March? Absolutely. Have we put ourselves in a good position through 19 games? Absolutely. You know, that was the goal, but there's still 12 league games left, um, and we're going to take them one at a time. You know, I, I've always said you get judged by the end result 20 games in this league and then obviously what we did in non-conference with nine and two set ourselves up pretty nicely and and now we just got to keep playing well you got to keep winning is there anything different about how you like where this team is at this point compared with like a year ago or are they, i like how where are the team's different yeah i mean i like where this team is offensively i liked where that team was defensively you know i think this team you know, as shown, we've been we've been more efficient offensively. We've we've shot the ball better. We've scored better. We quite we haven't had quite the defensive. I think it's getting better. You know, I think it's still a work in progress. But you know, we were so dominant and elite defensively last year, and we struggled to score. 
and we haven't reached probably that level on the other end, but I think we've been a little bit more functional and you look at our numbers. I mean, we've been, we've been scoring the ball more this year. Numbers are up, so probably that's where they differ a little bit. I think mentality's the same, culture's the same, leadership's the same. Uh, and I've just been proud. I mean, the guys have thrown themselves into the moment. You know, we don't talk about last year. You know, it's ever since we started this year, it's been about this team, this group, this journey. And, and, and I think that's really important as you try to accomplish your goals. You talk about those 12 games left in your conference schedule. Half of them are at home. Would you say there's kind of a, a pressure to have a, have a clean sweep or execute at home given how hard it is to win on the road in this season? Yeah, I think home games are very important. I mean, you, you look at how hard it's been, and I think. I've seen some graphics. I don't read a lot of stuff because I try to stay alert, but I do watch a lot of games. So I get a lot of my information from the graphics, uh, you know, that the TV people put up. But, you know, the, the road success has not been great in our league this year. Um, it's a testament to how good everybody is, but also the environments you play in. And so when you do get those home games, I think they become of utmost importance because you know it's, it's harder than ever to make it up. Because if you lose one at home, at some point, you got to make that up on the road because you got to win more than you lose if you want to be where you want to be at the end of the year. So, um, yeah, when you get an opportunity, we had these two home games this week. We are on the road for two next week. So, you know, when you're at home and you get a couple, you, it's it's very important that you do everything possible to, to protect that home floor. I think one of the biggest plays in overtime was the baseline out of bounds that led to a wide open dunk for Matt. What do you think is kind of, it seems like the team's getting a lot of good looks out of timeouts, out of those kind of out of bounds plays. What do you think has led to that success this year? Well, we work on them. You know, it's something I, when it comes to out of bounds plays, I mean, that's something we take pride in. We've always, our efficiency, we, we try to chart. I, I call those the special teams, kind of a basketball. You have the special teams in football. To me, special teams in basketball is out of bounds underneath the basket and out of bounds on the side, offensive and defensive. Are you guarding other teams' plays well in, that, in those situations? And are you stealing some baskets? And, you know, we've been able to have pretty good success. You know, the other night, you know, we, we had Ty hit a big three on an out of bounds under in the second uh, in the second half. And then, you know, we got obviously the slip with five on the shot clock. That was a big play late. You know, they had, they had I think, blocked the shot out of bounds. It was late clock, and we were able to get a slip there for a dunk, which was huge. So it's something we work on, you know, out of timeouts. A lot of times those are things we draw up that maybe the team hasn't seen because their scouting is – is so high level in this league. I mean, everybody with technology and the way everybody, the staffing that everyone has, you know, they, uh, they're they on your stuff. So you got to throw some different wrinkles and sometimes out of timeouts, it's the best way you can do it. And when you're dialing those up, are you reading kind of what your opponent has shown you so far or do you have, are you reading more of the situation in the game? I think a little of both. You know, I think coming into the game offensively, you know, you try to put a game plan together based upon what they do defensively, right? So. How do they guard your pick and rolls? How do they guard the post? How do they guard your off-ball screening? And you kind of come up with a thing, you know, a menu of things you think might work. And as a coach, maybe you keep some notes jotted down, like, okay, we need a bucket here. Where's what are some things we might want to go to? But also, you know, what the game entails. Do we need a two? Do we want to try to get a three? Who's hot? Do we want to try to get Ty a shot? Is it boo? You know, what are we? Or do we need to get Brooks something? So I think it's a little bit of a combination of both. Yeah. What's been the biggest difference you've seen since getting with the Buckeyes? Also, how much of a help you prepare for Saturday when you've seen him now for the past year? Yeah, I think it helps that our guys have played against him. Uh, to be quite honest, I think he's doing a lot of the same things. You know, they. The one difference is, you know, uh, you know, at Minnesota he played mostly as a four. You know, now they're going a little bit bigger at Ohio State. You know, he's playing some four, but he's playing a lot as a big wing. Um, and they do a good, I mean, Chris is a really good coach. He runs a million sets. So they have a lot of things where they run to try to bring him off screens, to try to get him in situations where he can get open shots. And, but his skill set remains the same. You know, he's big, he's 6'7", six, 6'8", six, and he's an incredible three-point shooter. But he can also back down a smaller guy and into the post. So I mean, we we have to do a really good job. I mean, when he when he throws up a big number, they become much more dangerous because we know Thornton and Gale can really score on the perimeter. Now to add that third guy, you know, really makes him dangerous. Sorry, we talked about Nicholson already, but yeah. what was the conversation when he starting? You put him on the bench, kick him off, and reinsert him into the starting line. How did he take that and obviously respond to Jake on uh, Wednesday? Yeah, I think Matt's responded great. You know, I, I just think we were at a point. It was after the Illinois game. Um, we, you know, we didn't play very well at all, and it wasn't his fault. 
but I just felt kind of the way he'd been playing, like, let's just jump start a little bit. You know, Luke had been doing a good job. He was really playing well and energetically, and we knew we needed to get Matt going. You know, and, and sometimes maybe it wasn't about benching him, but maybe just coming off the bench would be just a different look, a different feel. And, you know, I thought those three games or whatever, four games he came in, and he, he started with each game just to kind of show the Matt of old, you know, the Matt that we saw last year and, and with his fire and his athleticism, his ability to finish around the rim, the block shots. And you can see he's been much more engaged even in practices. And it's been great because I've talked about it all along. For us to reach our potential, we need Matt to be very effective. And, you know, we don't win that game the other night without not only his 12 points and eight rebounds, but the way he protected our basket. They had 21 offensive rebounds, but they only scored 19 second half points. A big part of that was Matt's ability to, you know, to protect the basket when they were getting those offensive rebounds. So he's a huge X factor for us. He's been our anchor, you know, physically with toughness, and it's just good to see him kind of get that confidence back. It's something we really need. You got a good response to your shirtless celebration in Milwaukee. Yeah, I kind of looked at the strength coach. I've been working out with him for a while now. So before I did it, first of all, the guys crushed me with water. So I'm tired of getting my shirts completely drenched. And many of you know that doesn't feel good, uh, a, a really ice cold shirt. So I can't, I kind of gave the look to the strength coach, like, have we put in the work where I can go to this? And he kind of gave me the nod, like, it's, you're looking good, coach, so let's do it. So spur of the moment, I, I'm not sure that'll be a, a, a regular thing, but uh, I was just proud of the guys. And, and more than anything, I didn't want to ruin another, another polo. Awesome, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.